Hello everyone. <clears throat> this is going to be uh, pretty rough, pretty quick, because uh, there's a lot of ground to cover and only so much time to do it in. I'm posting this as a response to um, Puka's excellent video, and I'm debating also posting it on the Collab channel. The whole question of it's the Superfly calling out Jesus Freak for hoping he would have strong enough faith to do what Abraham was willing to do. And the hue and cry about how it's the Superfly wasn't being fair, and, you know, Mel's the basket Mel's basket case chipping in and yada yada yada. That's all bullshit. And um, I think Nellie had it right in her video, which I will also link below. And wow, it's like the collab channel is totally mind melding on this in some ways. But there is a relation here. And that's and this goes back to it's getting loud. This goes back to my video about why stupid rhetoric is more dangerous than crazy rhetoric. And real quickly, it's because stupid rhetoric, you can isolate yourself from the damage and the harm and the suffering that you cause because, well, it's not your fault or it's not intentional or, well, it's justified by this other stupid thing over here. And sorry, I got the sniffles too. Um, when you have someone who has pushed the envelope so far to where people are willing to argue about whether or not him saying he hopes he could have the faith to sacrifice his child, you, it's easy to forget that there are people that, that now it is an openly acceptable discussion. It is part of our public discourse as to whether or not torture is acceptable. It is part of our, dis our discourse, again, as to whether or not we are going to eliminate abortion. And let me tell you, if, abor if uh, abortion cases or when abortion cases come before this Supreme Court with its current composition, Roe v. Wade is in trouble. It might be one blow or it might be a death of a thousand cuts, but the progress we've made will not hold, given the progress that the conservative side has made in the last 30 years. I mean, I'm not talking about, we've got to do something. I'm talking about, we now have to live with not doing something for the past 30 years, or not doing enough for the past 30 years, and letting them get organized and figure out what we're going to do for the next 30 years to try and turn this around. When you have people who believe, well, I wouldn't sacrifice my child, or I'm not going to think about that, or God wouldn't ask me to do that, and you leave it at that, you ignore that there are people who think that it's okay to pack the Justice Department, it's okay to start a war with Iraq on God say so, it's okay to um, not criticize the wealthy and to put down the poor when they get uppity because, well, God rewards success and punishes, or God, success is God, a reward from God and poverty is a punishment. Therefore, it must be okay for things to be the way they are or whether or not you believe there's a God at all, and you just believe it's the natural order of things. When you let people get away with making policy decisions based on stupid shit, well, live through the next 10 years and then tell me how you feel about living under that, as long as you don't try to blame it on, oh, well, it was just a happenstance. No. Look into the history of the moral majority. Look into the history of the Southern strategy. It's longer than 30 years. I just like to... Ronald Reagan is an emotional benchmark for me. But uh, look at these things and realize that these are... This is a lot of hard work that's gone into the disasters that are happening today. This is a lot of hard work that has gone into the governors being able to, of, of a few states, proposing to disband um, public sector unions. This is a lot of hard work that's gone into Ohio introducing a bill saying that um, that basically human life becomes protected when a heartbeat can be detected. Um, it, it's been a lot of hard work 
for South Dakota to be able to, or South Dakota and North Dakota, put together bills that effectively say it's okay to shoot people who would abort a fetus and then go, then go um, and backtrack and say, oh, well, if you think it goes there, then you're delusional. It's okay for... No, it's not okay. It is the product of a lot of hard work for the Speaker of the House to be decrying deficits and say it's all about jobs and then say, oh, well, if federal workers lose jobs because of these cuts, then so be it. Don't think these things are coming out of nowhere. Don't think that you have no power to influence them. Or, or feel free to, but I'm not interested in what you have to say because... The conservative grassroots, far more than the close margin in the Florida, you know, 2000 election, the conservative grassroots and what they've done if the, is dramatic proof in our generation of what you can do with activism. I mean, if you're going to forget about what unions did in the 30s, if you're going to forget about what... Um, suffragettes did. If you're going to forget about all of these things, look at what the, the religious right is doing, has successfully done to this country. And be human in your expectations. This is not going to be short. You will not live to see the fruits of your success. Or if you do, you will no longer be on the front lines. Or if you are, you've got a fuck of a lot more money, time, and energy than I do. So remember, when people say stupid shit, try and make the public space a little less accepting of it. Do your part. Thank you for your time and attention.